Check in and W fifty four fifty out. It's any night in the week, rain or shine, at the Norfolk and Western, Joyce Avenue Yard in Columbus. And they're making up time for 886, eastbound for Portsmouth, Ohio, Williamson and Bluefield, West Virginia, Roanoke and Norfolk, Virginia. N&W 50, 450, couples into its right place. Couples into time for 886. On this road, Time freights move with the precision of crack passenger trains. I don't know. I've had 30 years on the Norfolk and Western. I've seen men and equipment move practically anything that is reason to roll over these rails. There's the highball. Let's go. It's nine o'clock and 86 is getting out of town. When 86 moves, the product of the land moves along with her. Word goes out. The telegraph sends the news. 86 is on our way through the night. N and W time freights speed through a rich, progressive six-state area. Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, Kentucky, and Maryland. This is the land of plenty. The Norfolk and Western uses the words precision transportation when speaking of its service. That's more than a slogan, it's an accurate description. Over a century of railroading, thousands of skilled, loyal men and women, finest equipment money can buy or men can build, sound operation, cooperation with every shipper, it adds up to dependable freight service. People rely upon the railroad to move their products to market. They depend on the railroad for the distribution of food. They depend on the railway to empty their bulging barns of bright leaf tobacco. When the purebred steers are ready to move, the shippers turn to the N and W. The lumbermen know that the road will move their fragrant stacks of pine and upland hardwoods to market. Behind this diversification of cargo are the N and W's expensive studies on freight handling, packing, and loading. The railroad provides the proper power, and there's a car for every job designed to haul any product safely, dependably, and swiftly. The railroad has the equipment, but most important of all are the people who operate. In every station along the line, the local agent is the Norfolk and Western. He's a telegrapher, a railroader, and chances are he's a well-respected man in the business and social life of his community. 
your smallest shipment will receive his personal attention. Your box of family belongings will be shipped out with care and with dispatch. shipment moves from person to person, each one an integral part of the Norfolk and Western system. In the same fashion, the general agents are trained to serve you. Conveniently located all over the United States, they anticipate your car needs, plan for loading, advise on rates, routes, and schedules. If your shipment is export, import, coastal, or intercoastal, the foreign freight agent is ready to help you. The great peers at Norfolk are part of the system. Among them is Pier N, newest of the lot. Six million dollars spent on the largest single deck pier on the Atlantic coast. You're provided with every modern facility for the rapid, safe handling of your freight at piers that are designed to handle every type and size of vessel and cargo. Flags of all nations from ports of the seven seas meet in this great harbor. Norfolk is the gateway to markets of the world and one of the world's finest year-round ice-free harbors. You'll get personal service when you deal with the people who are the Norfolk and Western. The shipments are beginning to move out, load by load, car by car, on all the rails that spread out through the system. We know they need that coal to fire the stacks of industry. The riveters will get to work when that girder gets there. The mills will grind when those cars of grain arrive. The department store will open when the carpeting is delivered from that modern rug factory. The shifters and the yard engines pick up the single cars, the strings of two and three, and the local freights begin to build up. They hurry out of the stations, traveling the branch lines from every point on the compass. One thing that boosts them along is centralized traffic control. Trains moving from the east and from the west, moving fast. The position of every train in the district shows on the CTC board. With switch controls and signals, the dispatcher can keep them right under his thumb. Time was when such an operation could be dangerous and slow. Today, the dispatcher designates a siding, the trains pass without stopping. There's no lost motion, and the entire operation is handled in complete safety. CTC is an amazing improvement in railroading. The big parade is on. The pressure mounts. The fast freights of the Norfolk and Western are on the move. They push their way into the big classification yards. They pile into Roanoke, Virginia, part of the system. They steam towards Portsmouth, Ohio. And when they get there, they're made up into even bigger trains. Around 
round the clock it happens. They wheel towards Williamson, vast assembly yard for westbound coal, right into the heart of West Virginia's great coal fields. All through the night, 86 has been pounding towards Williamson. And that's where we pick her up again. There's 50, 450, riding easy. Yep, 86 slides into the yard right on time. The minute the locomotive pulls in the clear for her replacement, inspection starts. I mean real inspection, car by car and wheel by wheel. We don't aim to have anything hold up 86. The crew is changed. A fresh engine and a caboose are coupled on. And 30 minutes after arrival, we're ready to roll. She leaves the way she came. On time. Once underway, the brakeman climbs up in the cupola to ride her on his precious cars. And the conductor settles down to his wheel report. The report is the total train on paper and lists each car, its number, weight, and contents. This is how a railroad keeps track of all the thousands of cars that move over it every day. It's done in the car records office. Here the wheel reports are cut up and each car becomes a separate tab to be sorted by number and a record of its movements made. Here the charges to other roads are compiled. The wheel report is the total train moving now through the coal field region along Tug River. The plows cut deep into the valley. The upland hardwoods march over the hill. Underground are vast deposits of all-purpose bituminous coal. Agriculture, industry, and King Coal, and the railroad serves all three. Year after year, the Norfolk and Western plows back millions of dollars in improvements, new equipment, and maintenance. Railroad dollars, not taxpayers' dollars. Every man's a specialist on the Norfolk and Western, and every man's job is to build a better railroad. They're working for the freights of tomorrow. They have pride in the road, pride in keeping it one of the top road beds in all America. provided with the newest and best possible machines. Machines like this one, which tamps the ballast between and around and under the tide. The work on the line never stops. The high steel men swing girders into place on a new bridge. That bridge is a new approach to an old problem a problem that the pioneers of the Norfolk and Western had licked once before. That bridge and this fill lead to a new tunnel through Elkhorn Mountain. A new tunnel to speed traffic and increase operating efficiency. The Norfolk and Western put $12 million into this project and cut the largest double track railroad bore in the world, 7,000 feet long through the mountain. And once again, the grade and curvature have been reduced. Eight
86, on time, pulls into Bluefield, West Virginia, headquarters of the Pocahontas Division. In its consistent efforts to improve service, the NMW sends observers from its transportation department to study and record the train movements through the yard. One man, stationed at the head end, checks the time, technique, and work of handling the train from his observation post. The time it takes to inspect the train is recorded. Operations at the rear end are watched by a second observer. The speed and efficiency with which the cars for Bluefield are cut out of the train is studied for possible time saving. With the change of crew and equipment, the timing observation is complete. Time freight 86 is on the move again, and N&W 5450 rolls right along with it, headed for Roanoke. The observers get together to compare notes. The observations bring results. Daily performance proves it. Along New River in Virginia, the Powhatan Arrow streaks by. One of our finest trains. A real fast streamliner that runs between Norfolk and Cincinnati. Our engineer and fireman check their readings of the automatic signals. And we gather speed as we roll through the rich New River Valley. Coal is the fuel we use and like. And I don't know a fireman who isn't proud of his ability to get peak efficiency out of it. When our engineer opens her up, he's dependent on work and skill and controls that he knows. The locomotives are the handiwork of the designers, the builders, and the repairmen of the Norfolk and Western shops. Every time you see these men in a huddle, you know something better will come out of it. A better engine, improved consumption of fuel, faster handling of freight. In the shops, design reaches the most minute parts. The tool machines themselves are miracles of precision. If you must think of tons and miles, you also must think of milligrams and millimeters. You must think of correct weight and balance if you are to think of high-speed freight. To ensure the most efficient design and the finest workmanship, the Norfolk and Western builds all of its modern locomotives, including the giant Y6B. 86 proves the work in the shops as she slides through the switches into Roanoke. Roanoke, Virginia. Hub of the Norfolk and Western. There's our shipment. Still rolling. A crossroads location makes us one of the vital rail links of the nation. And we've got direct connections to the north and south the east and the west. One of the more important operations in time freight railroading is the re-icing of perishables. The farmers and packers give us fresh fruits and vegetables. 
We take pride in the fact that when we get them there, they're still fresh. Time Freight 86 is pushed up the hump, pushed up to a raised track and cut apart into units which coast according to destination onto the many tracks to form new trains. Retarders slow the cars down to just the right speed for gentle handling. The tower operators handle the retarders and the switches. Scientific railroading, making up trains with a flick of the wrist. A lot of cars are added to 86. Many are cut out to join new trains. And through shipments stay with her all the way. N&W 50, 450 rolls over and down the hump too. Back into a new 86 after only a single day on the road. Making up now for the overnight run to Norfolk. You can set your watch fire as 86 leaves on time for the run to Tidewater. Other time freights move out too, north to Hagerstown, Maryland, up the Shenandoah Valley, south to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, to Piedmont and the Midlands, southeast to Durham and east to the ports of the Atlantic coast, southwest to Bristol and Norton, Virginia, west to Columbus and Cincinnati, Ohio. The strength of the nation rides on the rail. The reapers gather the wheat and the rye, and the mills ship flour to stores throughout the land. Homes in the making speed over the shining steel. Industry needs its raw materials. Iron and aluminum weights the flat. Steel rides on steel. The fork trucks stack wool for carpet. Tank cars form a swiftly flowing stream of oil. Others move on to private sidings, bringing chemicals for drugs. The stacked carboys carry bleaches, solvents. Dealers need stock to sell, dry goods and washing machines. Detroit ships its cars. Wheels ride on wheels. King Cole rides the rails. Raw material, fuel, and power packed in a coal car. The whistle signal for the farm town. Graders and threshers travel on flat cars. Trains haul tractors to work the land. Phosphate and potash arrive tonight. The telegraph sends the news. Fast freight rushing fence and wire. Feed for the stock, bran and oats and alfalfa. The speeding trains bear the strength of the nation. It's 4.45 in the morning in the tower at Norfolk. 86 shows up on the board. The operator hangs out the welcome signal. And 86 rolls into town. And as you might expect, so does N&W 5450. More than a hundred years of railroading is rolling through its second century on time. Check N and W fifty four fifty in.